In this video, I will show you how I make this multicolored Scrafito hummingbird design. Wanna join? Come on in. Welcome back, my Bollywood friends. Welcome back to the studio and welcome 2024. And speaking of 2024, when it was still 2023, <laughs> Uh, you know, during the busy uh, December month and Christmas and all things, um, after that I took a little break. Uh, some of you who know me know that if I have a break I like to do other creative things like sewing. I've been uh, having fun at my sewing machine. I'll, I'll stick in some footage to show you. And uh, took a little break, recharged, and I'm back, full of energy. And while I was on that break, I took a look through my channel and holy cows, in December, we crossed the 2000 subscriptions line. I have over 2000 subscribers. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to have you here and happy to make these videos for you because I like it. I love it. I, I love to be in contact with you guys. So as always, if you have a question or a comment or a remark, please don't hesitate. Uh, but not now. Just, you know, video first. Um, while I was looking at my channel as well, I... That sounds funny. I also noticed that I haven't done a Scrivita video in ages. Months. And as I have a request for some small plates, I thought... Let's do that for the first video of 2024. Show you my multicolored graffito technique, I guess it is. And uh, I'll take you along with that, um, with that one. There is a short on this video already uh, of one from the same request. It's the blues and greens multicolored um, turtle design i think you've seen me make it before or at least you've seen some come out of the kiln so i thought i'd do the other one for you on camera which is a request for hummingbirds so i will uh, show you that let me first uh, share some uh, mason stain recipes i've seen some videos of people struggling with colors that burn out happened to me as well you know it's always testing 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 uh, um you do, for the most part, need a zinc-free clear glaze because zinc sometimes eats up the colors. But these are tried and true recipes that give you a good color and especially purples and reds and sometimes green are difficult. So let me, uh, you know, let me share you with you first my recipe. This is a new red. The old red that I used to use, I couldn't buy it anymore. This is the 6088 Mason Stain at 10%. Uh, you will have to see the kiln opening for the colors. Mm -hmm. And as I'm going to do it right now. Okay. This one is a purple, a dark purple. And it's 50% of that red. And 50% sapphire blue. And the sapphire blue is at 5%. That's the purple. And I have an orange. Which is one part of that same red, 6088 at 10%, and three parts of 6479, which I believe is the sunshine yellow, which is at 5%. So there you go, that's the recipe. I will switcheroo, do my thing with the camera to get you onto my uh, work surface, go get my plate out of my jimmy, and I'll see you right there. there. We are. As you can tell, I have already done the sides because I'm not going to carve there. And I'm now going to um, put on my slip. And I tend to start with one whole layer of the base color that I want to have in there. Uh, it doesn't have to be neat and tidy because there's a lot more slip coming on there. But um, red will be the base color and I want to have a few layers of the red on the rim as well so I will do that 
Now I will do one on the rim. Usually two layers of my slip with mason stain is enough for complete coverage for a solid color. Not all colors, some need a little more or when I have just made new slip, new colored slip, it's usually a bit thinner because it's easier to mix in the stains when it's thinner. So then if I don't need to, ooh, ooh, <laughs> don't do that. Uh, if I don't need it right away, I will just put it aside. If I need it right away, I just let, keep the lid off and it will dry out depending on the weather of course so there's my first layer uh it's all about the center right so then i have orange and purple i will now take my orange and put some orange on there pretty random two layers as well I will now go to my purple, which is a little smaller brush. So the the peaks of the or the peaks, the purple parts will be a little bit smaller for a little variation. This is not planned. I have no idea yet where I will put my hummingbirds. Um, I decide that later. Now I need to remember which one I have. Only one coat. Oh, but you can see a little bit, I think. I try to get rid of the little ridges that I sometimes make with my brush I mean it's not a big problem but I try to and then I go back to my red there's another ridge I'll take that off because my red needs a second coat as well and if I'm lucky Again, depending on the weather, I can mix them still a little bit. Sometimes it uh, works, sometimes it doesn't. Now, if I think I have overdone it with my red and I am missing a little bit of the orange here and there, I just put it back on. Only one layer. The red will shine through, which makes it even more multicolored. I like that. This doesn't have to be precise or neat or... See how it mixes? I like that. And I will also do that with my purple. I am sort of kind of getting rid of these stark straight edges and lines depends on what design I make whether I think I want to do that in hummingbirds I don't want any or as many straight lines there we go 
Now this has to stiffen up a little bit before I can carve. So uh, yeah, I'll go get myself a glass of water or something like that. And I'll come back to you when this is ready to carve. Before we get to the carving of the design, or the drawing through the slip of the design, um, here's my hummingbird. <laughs> and I thought I'd share with you a little trick. Um, if you're not good at drawing yourself, meaning, can you draw me a donkey? Sure, here it is. I cannot do that either. I have to practice. And what I do is um, I go onto Pinterest and oh, you know what? I'll show you. Hold on. I hope this will show up. Uh, there is my ridiculously big screen. It's an old television that my uh, my hubby uh, fixed for me and hung up here for when I do computer stuff. I don't even need my reading glasses. It's ridiculous. But hey, what I do is I go on Pinterest and I look up coloring pages. I have already typed in. I'm not sure if you can read it. It reflects probably and does weird things. Um, coloring page hummingbird. I even spelled it wrong, but it did give me hummingbirds. And then I have this. This is pattern paper as a sewist. You know, I have pattern paper. You can use any transfer paper. And I will cut out. I will go get scissors. Hold on. I'm so well prepared as always. <laughs> Let's just say, for, for the fun of it, uh, I want my design to be approximately this big I meaning I cut out the size that I think I will need and then I will go to my screen and let's uh, let me see can, oh, I can turn it a little bit more I don't know if this works we'll see in the editing let me go let's say I like that one I put on my uh, the size of my um, piece the size of my paper that I want to f that will fit on my piece and I can see it's too big I will hit control minus or con and it becomes a little smaller and it goes away where are you huh let's try again control plus to get it bigger it is actually gone oh no there it is there it is let's see Control minus and it gets smaller a little bit. You don't have to do it this way. Oh, there it is. You can do it different ways. Well, and now it might fit the piece of paper. And because this is transparent, I take a very soft pencil. I don't want to stretch my, my screen. Um, 6B and I just copy the outline and then I go to practice and then I go work with it you can also save this to um, paint which is on every Windows computer and you can scale up and scale down there until you have it fit let me get this back there you can also of course print where am I where am I <laughs> look oh look there is my big 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 workbench let me switch the camera that's how I do it usually um, you can of course go to your computer and print on copy paper which works as well I have a whole bunch of designs and some of them are on copy paper I like working with a thinner paper to transfer them the, gosh, the design onto my piece but it works with copy paper as well so is my plate dry enough nah not yet a few more minutes I'll be back it is uh, dry enough uh, stiffened up enough for me to carve I am going let me check the camera for a second is this all right I think so I'm going to use this one. It might look a bit small for this plate, but I'm going to put on more. 
and it's going to fit or um, it's, a, it's sort of kind of a set because I've already made a mug with the same hummingbird same colors so I'm going to repeat this Ooh, let's put it here because it will blow away well I put away this mug because this is still drying of course oh, hold on I'll be back <laughs> Um, so I'm going to use the same one and uh, I tend to wing it but you can of course first with a soft pencil sketch out where you want what or uh, sketch your whole design if you want to I tend to not <laughs> I will use one of my styluses I will show you one This is, let me, yeah, here we go. This is a Kemper. It's Kemper. I can't, I can't read the number. And I'm using the bigger ball on this one. The other one side is smaller. I will put this on there. And I know you're looking from the side, but because I have this long, narrow workbench, it's difficult for me to do it in another way. So bear with me. I'm going to start here. And I'm going to lightly, with the thicker part, go over my design, or at least the outlines. And I can change them up while I go if I want to. This line will be visible for me in a second in the clay but if you don't keep to that line it won't be visible after the firing now i'm hoping you can see that uh, i'm going to lift you up and put you up there i have to reach my camera i'm not sure i can't see but i'm if not, I'll <laughs> cut it out. I hope you can see it. I can see a very, very slight indent of this uh, hummingbird there. Let me carve that one first and then it's easier for you to see. I then take the other side of my stylus, the smaller ball, and I just follow the lines. It's like a coloring book. love using a bending wheel or a lazy susan however you want to call them I'm not getting quiet because I'm concentrating. <laughs> I am only carving through the slip as much as I can. Don't want to dig into the clay too much. And I like to use these styluses because of the round balls. If I were to use a very fine V-tipped tool which are out there which are fine which are very good to work with i have difficulties with um keeping it flowing with going um around you know like this if i were to use a v-tip here i i can't seem to work with that i get weird lines then i will take a little brush put in its eye with the bigger ball and later when it's even drier I will put in a, uh, I will divide its beak but even, even with a thinner one than this 
I still see some red here. Now, where is the next one going? I want... Oh, hold on. It needs a flower. I want it to be in the flower with its beak, like it's um, uh, feeding, you know, drinking the nectar. Oh, I see a little red here too. So I will make the center of the flower go around the tip of the beak, or is it a bill? I don't know. You know what I mean. And then I'll make the petals. Still a bit soft. go that's the first one with one flower now how am I going to do this I want more flowers to, I want one more there so I can put one there but I don't want them all the same direction so this one's going to go like that I think and because I want that beak in the flower I will have to make or draw at least the hummingbird first so I can draw the flower behind it so if I have a flower here that's not is that going to work sure why not so I flipped it around that's the that's the best part of using transparent paper you can flip it around and see the back side and we do it all again trace it onto the plate and by now if I make um, turtles or flamingos by now I can do those freehand these hummingbirds I don't make very often so I'm still using my template for these until I don't have to anymore <coughs> See, I'm getting quiet again. Oh, it's funny. Never mind my neighbors, if you can hear them. That's number two. Let's give him something to see with. There you go. Uh, not that one. Another flower. made it too small I had a different idea but that doesn't matter nobody knows
to the camera. Uh, there we go. So far, so good. Now, I get a lot of questions about when to come. My slip is smearing. I don't, I don't get these crisp lines or, I, you know, slip smears and it's not white. And I have found that there are two reasons for that. And I'm going to have to look for a tool to show you. But the first reason is it's not stiff enough. For the design, it can be a little softer. Um, well, the way I do it anyway. For the carving, I tend to wait a little bit longer. Ah, this is a good one to show you. So you need to wait until the slip or your underglaze really is dry enough so it doesn't smear. You have to try it out. If it still smears, wait a little longer. Underglaze works a little bit different because there are ingredients in underglaze that are not in just a clay body and um, mason stain. There's nothing else in here. The other one is you can have loop tools and loop tools. Uh, this one, let me show you another one. We all know these, the standard loop tools you can buy almost anywhere. They are pretty okay, except if you, you have to buy a set and they have these funky shapes. Let me see if I can find one. Put on my glasses. Hold on. Do I still have one in a funky shape? Yeah. Shapes like this. So that's for me is difficult to work with. I just bend them with small pliers into the shape I like and they work pretty fine I love 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 these the shim tools they also come in sets and this one I also have bent because it had a funky shape uh, but most of them I, I uh, like the way they are where am I where am I I use these the most Kemper ones perfect this is a Dolan also, my other favorite. I love, love the Olin tools. I don't know if you can tell. Let me see how thin that tip has become. I've been using it so long. And it wears out a little bit. Uh, but um, the second reason why your slip might smear is because your tool isn't sharp. And that's what I meant with, with there are loop tools and loop tools. These have a sharp edge but there are also tools that are round round it the the piece of metal is round and not flat and sharp that will definitely work less good than a sharp tool but there's my tip sharp tools from flat why well, I even I, I actually have made some from staples works but, you know, to be honest, I'd rather buy these. They are lovely to work with. So, now I have my design almost done. I'm going to put some more flowers on there. And uh, a little bit more background, maybe. And when it's time to carve, I'll come back to you and show you. Oh, it's about 20 minutes later. And now, as you can see, I have practiced a small piece. And that's fine. It's not smearing. I'm using this one which I have changed its shape of a little bit and uh, I'm now going to carve. I like to start in the groove that I've made with my drawing instead of going towards it because if I slip I have to fix something in my design if I take a um, slip away where I don't want to take it away. So I like to go away from my design and I like to go pretty fast as you know I'm not the kind of scafito artist if I may call myself that that carves away everything I like to leave some bits and pieces because first of all I like 
I just like the look and second of all I why would I carve everything away I want it to be seen that I have been carving and depending on whether you're right or left-handed there is a way where it's easier to go um, uh, to go neatly along these lines and for me it's on the left side because I'm a lefty and now I can carve that away without running the risk of damaging my design which of course does happen and has happened and yes it's fixable but if you don't have to that's nice and that's it actually <laughs> um, for this I need a smaller one I only have a few I don't have that many really honestly I don't I don't <laughs> That's ridiculous. Where is my smallest one? I can't find it. Of course I can't. Oh gosh, did I drop it? Or am I just... Oh no, I'm just not seeing it. <laughs> my favorite Dolan one. Or these tiny corners. And then onto the carving. This is such a nice... Uh, how do you call it? Oddly satisfying. <laughs> it's so, so nice to do this. I love this. Yes, you can keep the little scraps and, and use them. I have pressed them in fresh a fresh slab of clay. Um, you do need to really press them in very well or your glazing goes wonky. I think it's in one of the videos on my channel. don't know exactly which one. The direction you carve in, if you are somebody like me who likes to leave some slip behind so you can see it's carved, that will be visible. Uh, I like to go straight. But sometimes I have done that too. I go around and that gives a total different look. But because this has to, has to, this is going to be a set with that mug and that mug has been done straight. S straight is a big word, straightish. <laughs> I'm going to do this one the same. Get these buggers out of the way. Get my nice small one. Keep my plate straight so I keep my carving straight. That's my brush. There it is. And that's it, folks. Really. I don't know. Should I keep the camera rolling? Might get a bit boring. I might speed it up. I can do that. Oh, no. I'll do the flowers for you first. And the details in the hummingbirds. Let's do that. Hold on. For the beaks or bills, I don't know, to show up really well in that flower, I need a small one again. Where's my small one? I'm going to take away let me take this one dark it's better for you to see I'm going to take away the center of the flower and then you will see that little the tip of that beak sticking out or in the flower
So there, this is a spot where I do carve away all the slip for the contrast. See? So that's how I do those. And I have another stylus which is a lot thinner even. This is really, really, really thin. And with this one, I will do that. I divide that uh, beak in two. And I will give him a little bit of... Oh, I forgot something. See that? I forgot this here. And I will do the wings. That's not the right one. Gives a, a little smaller, thinner line. And the tail feathers and that's it let's do another one so i'll take out the center of the flower first and again i go from the edge of design into the middle and then from the design of that beak outward I do not want to slip up if I have to correct a small little tip like that that's going to bug me I don't want to there's that my thin stylus I guess you could just this is so thin you could just use a needle. <laughs> so that's that.
now that it's done, well, it's not, but, you know, all the carving's done, I'm going to give it um, an overall look over, glance over, looking at it and taking off a little bit more where I find that either I haven't taken away enough close to the design or where I think that's just a little bit too much. <sighs> and I'm hoping I can maybe get this a little bit straighter down. Probably not. It is what it is. No, not bad actually. <laughs> you know the thicker parts like this? Take a little bit away. And I tend to take away a little bit more where there is less negative space. For the contrast, you know. That's a bit too much. I'll do that from the other side. That's easier. That's a bit too much. side <sighs> yep, I think we're good oh no not yet <laughs> at some point you have to stop fiddling okay almost there That's a thick one. That needs to be broken up. Did I forget something? I don't think so. No, they're still good. I think she's done. I am going to go around the flowers and the birdies with my stylus if I can find it. Oh, there it is. There we are. All done. Is this correct? Yes, this is the correct way up. A little bit more light. <laughs> and now we have to be patient. Um, one more thing. Maybe, I don't know if you're interested. I'm going to tell you anyway. What I do to dry these... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm diving down here. I have made these little <laughs> sandbags and they're a bit dusty. Oh God, that was not good. <sighs> I will put a piece of paper on my plate. Hold on. You know, let's just do it. Do it. Do it right. Piece of newspaper. I don't want to be... Uh, don't want to have to say to you, do as the teacher says and not as the teacher does, you know. <laughs> Which probably I almost always have to. Piece of paper on the plate. A little baggie on it. 
for weight. The sometimes flat plates will bow up in drying, in my experience. You could also uh, dry it upside down. I've done that too, works as well. But there you have it. The first one, 2024, in my favorite technique, scruffy toe. Yeah, she's going to be beautiful. And I'm going to see you again in the next video. Uh, if you like this video, like the video. Yeah, helps me out a bit. And um, thanks for watching. See you next time. Don't forget to comment if you have a question or just want to say hi. Okay, be nice to each other. Have an amazingly beautifully and creative new year. Let's go for it in 2024. Let's spread the creativity on this internet. Okay, let's do it. Bye-bye.